Five Unusual People in the World, Part 210. Hello, everyone. I'm Kisha, and wish you all funny and useful moments of discovery. We were all born different, with different geographical locations and genetic codes. Among them, there are millions of special people. Let's meet them through this video. Are you ready? Let's begin. Sometimes. Ultrasound can predict a baby's health issues before they are born, helping parents prepare mentally and medically for any situation. But not every couple wants to give up on their child upon discovering abnormalities. Number five, Elliot Sargent. Elliot Sargent, born in 2016 in Wilmington, North Carolina, USA. Surprised the world with the rare condition that caused internal organs like the stomach, intestines, fallopian tubes, and ovaries to develop outside the body. Doctors diagnosed this as a case of abdominal wall defect, a rare occurrence where a fetus's abdomen doesn't close, leading to the development of internal organs outside the abdominal cavity. Ilya not only faced an unusual appearance, but also dealt with health vulnerabilities. With medical intervention, the baby's internal organs had to be enclosed in a nylon pouch to prevent infection. She underwent multiple surgeries right after birth to sustain her body's ability to survive. Elliot underwent a series of hours-long surgeries to reposition everything. After 63 days, she was discharged, but required regular health monitoring to ensure stability. For infants, crying often serves as a way to express emotions and communicate with the world around them. However, if a child never cries, it could be a dangerous sign, indicating a rare and potentially challenging to treat condition. Number four, Gabby. Gabby Gingras. Is that fun? Yeah. Gabby Gingras, born in 2000 in Minnesota. Suffers from an incredibly rare condition. She doesn't feel pain, even when chewing on her fingers or causing harm to her eyes. The nerve system transmitting pain signals from her body to her brain doesn't function in Gabby's case. Doctors diagnosed Gabby with HSAN, an extremely rare genetic disorder affecting the sensory nervous system. Specifically, her nerves don't respond to feelings of pain and environmental temperatures. Simply put, Gabby doesn't sense pain. Gabby has self-chewed and bitten her fingers to the extent that her parents had to decide to pull her teeth. She's also harmed her eyes to the point where doctors had to remove one eye to prevent ongoing self-injury. She can even break her leg without realizing she's causing an injury. To help Gabby manage this rare condition, her parents put in a lot of effort to find treatment. Currently, she's improving. Her ability to recognize danger has been enhanced, enabling her to be more proactive in avoiding unintended harm. Number 3. Adrian Asbino The story of Adrian Asbino is not just shocking but deeply emotional. Born in 1998 in Chihuahua, Mexico, he had a physical appearance that startled and frightened many. His life from an early age was tied to sorrows and difficulties. Adrian's father, Adrian Sr., took his son to the hospital where doctor's diagnosis revealed that he had polyostatic fibrous dysplasia. This condition causes certain bones in the body to develop unevenly, growing in random directions. The doctor also noted that there was no way to completely cure this and the tumor would continue growing over time. The tumor initially began as a small bruise on Adrian's face when he was only 6 years old, but over time, it grew to nearly 7 pounds, severely affecting his respiratory system and eyesight. This impact led Adrian to contemplate suicide multiple times, but he later thought about his family and stopped. After discussions with doctors, both father and son traveled over a thousand miles to Mexico City to undergo a risky surgery performed by Dr. Laura Andrade Delgado. The tumor on his face was too hard, and the doctor had to use a hammer and chisel to remove the 6 by 6 pounds tumor. Despite a successful surgery, Adrian still needed to undergo several more surgeries. 
Let's continue with a poignant and profound story about a pair of twins. I suggest having someone with you when you hear about them. Number two, June and Jennifer Gibbons. June and Jennifer Gibbons, born on April 11, 1963, were identical twins of Indian descent who later moved to Wales. From an early age, they exhibited peculiar behavior. They communicated using a unique language and almost exclusively spoke to each other, rarely engaging with anyone else, including their parents. Despite frequently being bullied at school, they seemed indifferent to it. Instead, they indulged in a peculiar game with dolls. They created elaborate imaginary worlds for their dolls and detailed notes on the date of death and how each doll would die. Subsequently, they were admitted to a psychiatric hospital and endured 12 years of this torment. They even attempted suicide several times without success. Jennifer realized that her heart beat normally when away from June, but in her twin's presence, her heart raced faster. The sisters agreed that if one died, the other would lead a normal life, believing death to be necessary. Ultimately, Jennifer agreed to sacrifice herself. A few days after leaving the hospital, Jennifer sat beside June on a bus rested her head on June's shoulder, and peacefully passed away. According to the doctor, Jennifer died suddenly from acute myocarditis, and the precise cause remained a mystery to many. Following Jennifer's death, June began to speak and live a conventional life. She got married, had children, and frequently visited her sister's grave. This is a story about the emotional depth and incredible strength of a twin bond. The specific example of this man reflects to some extent the struggle for the rights of men who wish to wear skirts, highlighting the societal lack of acceptance that still exists. Number 1. Vladimir Fomin Recent studies have suggested that men wearing skirts in Scotland could have a positive impact on sperm production and provide psychological benefits. In this context, Vladimir Fomin, born in 1968 and residing in Kaneshma, a town in the Ivanova region of Russia, stands out for consistently choosing to wear skirts instead of trousers when going out. Vladimir doesn't wear skirts to seek attention or become famous. In fact, he does this to defend the rights of men and poses the question, why are women allowed to wear skirts while men aren't? Although his intention might seem absurd, in reality, any man has the freedom to wear a skirt and high heels without any constraints from the government or individuals. Fomin's struggle has resulted in significant drawbacks, estrangement from friends and family, opposition from the community, and difficulty fighting employment due to the uniqueness of his attire. Anyone who meets them once can remember them forever. I think there will be someone like them in this world. It's just because we haven't known. I will find them and tell you in the next videos. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to watch more interesting videos. And now, goodbye and see you again.